Hello everyone, my name is Mark Wormsley and I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network and we have, I use these videos actually as a measure of where we are on the LinkedIn group. We, we're I think 23,200 at the moment on LinkedIn which is great and today is the 11th of May so I can listen back to these and track our progress. Um, I'm joined today by Richard Byrne and Richard is one of our full members and he is a PR specialist working in the arts and culture sector uh, and partially and um, what we like to do on these uh, quick videos is to do a an arts and culture hot top 10 and a this or that game and so what we find is um, for the for the benefit of people who have yet to have the pleasure of, re of meeting Richard this is a great way for you to get to know him and what makes him tick and where his preferences lie. So, Richard, thank you very much for joining me to do this. Oh, welcome, you he, he, he says with trepidation. trepidation. I can point out, I yeah, I've, I've given uh, I've given Richard no warning of this. So this is off the cuff, instinctive, and it might well lead to further conversations. So what I'm going to do is ask you if you have a favourite in a series of ten arts and culture. Uh, categories if you don't there's no problem if you do that's great perhaps you'd like to tell us why uh, and then we'll do a quick this or that at the end of that so the first thing I'd like to ask you is if you have a favorite building oh that's an easy one that's an easy one so Carrie Reichardt's Mosaic House in West London is an amazing house she was living in it for years and years and then the, there's a whole story about why she started mosaicing it but she's covered the whole of the outside of her house in mosaic and uh carrie's a fantastic mosaic artist and uh yeah I, it lives it's near to where my mum lives in london so whenever i'm there i toddle up and have a look at it and i take my kids up and when i have visitors i show it to them um it's just it's one of the wonders of london and uh, i had the pleasure of interviewing her actually for an article and uh for topia magazine and i got to go inside the house and oh it's just amazing google it carrie reichardt's house it's, so Harry Reichardt. Okay, I will. And Topia. I, I know somebody at Topia, so we probably have a mutual connection there. Okay, that's a great one. Um, I'll, we, we'll need to find the pictures. I've just realised that my I nobody ever asks me these questions, so mine can change because they change every time. But um, my favourite would have to be um, the House for Essex. Um, in uh, it's um, uh, what's his name? Oh. This always happens to me and the names go. Um, I'll come back to it. The, 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 the guy who does the um, the wonderful pottery. Um, Grayson Perry. Grayson Perry, yes. Oh, what, his house? The, the Grayson his, Perry house? Yes, I stayed there for a weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just wonderful. It was, like, it was like sleeping through a dream for a week, whole weekend. It was yeah. just amazing. It's yeah, a I lovely think, story. Think yeah, it's a lovely story based on a, uh, the story of, a, of, a, of an Essex girl and her journey and the fact that she she dies after being run over by a pizza delivery motorbike and the motorbike's hanging from the ceiling. You know, it's it's a it's a wonderful combination of architecture and and creativity. It's fantastic. Mm. It's right on the stair at the top point of Essex. It's great. Anyway, I divest. Sorry, this is about you, not about me. Love the building. So that's Carrie Reichardt's. House. Mosaic House. Mosaic House. How do you spell Reichardt? R-E-I-C-H-A-R-D-T. Great. Okay. And a favourite book, please, Richard? Favourite book? Oh, my goodness. I think it would be um, Secret Scripture by Sebastian Barry. That's probably my go-to favourite book at the moment. Just anything Sebastian Barry writes is just beautiful. He's got a real poetic kind of uh, way with words and he writes a lot about uh Ireland kind of early 20th century Ireland and my family originally from Ireland uh and so quite a lot of it's tangled up in civil war kind of stuff uh but yeah and he follows a couple of families in his various books wow great excellent and do you have a favorite dancer or dance group favorite dancer or dance group um yeah, I guess that would probably at the moment would probably be Chicken Shed. Uh, yeah, they're just all about inclusion. 
and uh, you can you can see them if you google them chicken shed online they were on uh, britain's got talent recently oh okay I'll, I'll have a look and this one's fun if uh, i want you to uh, want you to assume you've been banished from this country for some reason um but you've been given the opportunity to to live in any country in the world and which would you choose based on its culture oh my goodness um probably probably belgium for the beer and the chocolate <laughs> for the, i do have some very nice friends in belgium as well um, okay. and i love the french language but i don't think i'd want to live in france itself but uh, belgium would be okay yeah you could go to switzerland then you can choose four languages i think switzerland has four recognized yeah languages. yeah so but not as good beer not as good beer no um and as a spectator or a participant do you have a favorite sport well i guess it is probably football yeah just kind of or oh, built into childhood kind of right from early days kind of uh, watching football watching ireland play football and england play football and all of the stuff that goes with that and my club team following them through their ups and downs and yeah and then i love the world your cup club team Oh, it's at the moment it's not good. It's Manchester United, which is kind of um, okay. I'm, I'm dreading them getting hammered in the FA Cup final by Man City in a few weeks' time. It, it, I don't think it's going to be pretty. Um, but I love the whole kind of thing. This World Cup was a bit of a mess because of Qatar. But normally that sort of World Cup party of so many people around the world engaging with this thing and being part of that is is a joy. Yeah. I guess we'll get a sense of that on Saturday evening as well, Eurovision this this time around. In, in oh yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of Eurovision. Eurovision. You are or not? You, oh you yeah, are. yeah, yeah. I'm oh, dedicated. Yeah, yeah. I am. Book the yeah, night. We're having, a, we're having a family Eurovision theme party, so yeah, um, playing silly games on that one as well. I love it. Um, I love the movie as well. That's with Will Ferrell. It's hilarious. It's oh yeah, I've seen the Will Ferrell movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, back to football. Have, have you watched Ted Lasso at all? It's no. My nephews football. talk about about him. They watch like, tons of telly and they write on trend with whatever's going on. So I know Ted Lasso is a thing, but I haven't seen it. it. I I've, I hadn't seen it for a long time. It's on Apple TV, so you've got to pay to see it. Mm. Uh, but it's absolutely worth six pounds a month. It's it's just wonderful. It's one of those series that you you're upset that you can't watch the next one for another week. You know, nice. it's so well done and it's football and it's funny um, and the characters are just lovable. It's um, very, very clever. Anyway, I digress. Um, if you could only listen to one musical genre for the rest of your life, which would it be? Musical genre? I think it would probably be folk. Does that okay. count as a genre? Is that okay? Folk? Yes. Yeah. Anyone specific in that genre that you would oh, want on uh, your list well uh there's nancy kerr whose mother sandra kerr did the music on bagpuss uh she's great a fiddle player and a poet and uh, a singer and then the brothers gillespie i've seen them live a couple of times they're two singers from northumberland and they just do these beautiful harmonies and it's the kind of music that you yeah listen to as a feel good on any day of the week brilliant love that um and do you have a favorite visual artist a favorite visual artist gosh well that would vary depending on mood i guess um i'm looking at a couple of paintings by a lovely <laughs> artist that i work with called trey trace trey tronic tracy ann britain uh, one of which mm -hmm. i have just here so i'm very nice. i like a, i like a nice splash of color uh, yeah so, um she's yeah i mean i've got a bunch of her paintings up in my i've got a bunch of her paintings up in my house so right. i guess she must be one of my favorite visual artists what was uh, her name again uh tracy ann britain trey or Traytronic is her website okay. t-r-a-y-t-r-o-n-i-c okay uh, well we can we can track her down that's great thank you um do you have a favorite play or musical well, oh, um, 
I guess Matilda would be the favourite at the moment. I've taken my kids to see Matilda a couple of times and uh, we we play the music on long car journeys and we've learned all the words and everything and uh, quite enjoy um, doing Mrs Trunchbull's bits as well. That's quite fun. Um, yeah, yeah, so probably Matilda. Sound of Music has got a special spot as well. I've been to some sing-along of Sound of Music with fancy dress and they're very special memories. Yeah. I think Matilda, when I saw it, was the best thing I'd seen in the West End. Um, the, 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 just fantastic. Uh, genius Minchin. Yeah, it's yeah, so his words are just great. Yeah, yeah. Um, excellent. And do you, do you have a favourite film, Richard? My favourite film probably at the moment would be The Red Shoes. It's an old movie based on the story of The Red Shoes. And... It's from quite early days of uh, colour movies. And in that period when things hadn't been defined about what a movie should look like. And it's got, I can't remember how long, I think it's about an eight minute ballet in the middle of the, so it's about some ballet dancers. And then in the movie, there is just this kind of eight to 10 minute ballet scene. And when you watch it, it, it I watched Singing in the Rain recently and it, it made me think of the red shoes, that thing where, doing weird stuff where stage moves into film and and uh playing with reality uh, happens a lot in it um and so yeah you would never get you 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 would be a brave director who would try and pitch a film with an eight minute ballet in it to a movie producer yeah. these days is that, so is it singing in the rain where gene kelly and sid charise go off into some kind of fantastic dance sort of segment or is that a different movie yeah yeah that's it they have this dance segment and they, they open the door and they go through it and then suddenly a whole yeah. theatre opens in front of them and they go through another door and yeah so it's it's so interesting the way that they play yeah. with the perspectives and color and is, is red shoes um is that judy garland or it's certainly somebody who looks like Ju judy garland it's got to be 1930s i would say isn't it yeah i can't remember who's in it but um lots of directors cite it as big influences on their filmmaking so baz luhrmann um cites it as one mm. of the key influences on on his uh right. career. interesting and the last question in this little segment um is apart from me who was the what was the last thing that made you laugh Last thing that made me laugh, um, uh, probably an IT crowd, an IT crowd moment. Right, excellent. This is, no, that's great. Thank you. I I love doing this because people watching will feel as though they've got to know you a little bit better, which is fantastic. Um, the last one we'll do is a kind of this or that. You've got to choose one or the other, and you need to do it quite quickly. And I'll rattle through them. Is okay. that all right? Yeah. Okay um red or white wine red wine always yeah radio or tv radio um netflix in or a night out night out mostly yeah if i get okay. the chance um dressing up or dressing down dressing up I should do a lot more often. <laughs> <laughs> Shower or bath? Bath. Numbers or words? Words. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Indoors or outdoors? Probably indoors, yeah. Uh, night owl or early bird? These days, probably early bird. Okay. Book or podcast? Book. Um, tea or coffee? Did we do tea or coffee? Uh, we haven't done tea or coffee. So yes, that depends. So tea is the, the regular day in, day out, six cups a day or something crazy like that. Right. And coffee is an occasional treat. I'm the opposite. I'm coffee all morning and tea towards the end of the afternoon. Okay. Um, car or motorcycle? Oh gosh, never a motorcycle, no, <laughs> not for me. Comedy or horror? Comedy, never horror. I can't, but yeah, horror really horrifies me. Concert hall or sports stadium? Concert hall. Library or museum? Museum. Sand or snow? 
snow. Messy or tidy desk? Oh, if you could see, definitely messy desk, yeah. Batman or Superman? Oh, Batman is so much more fun, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Rare or well done? Rare or well done? Well, I'm vegetarian, so if we're thinking celeriac steak, I would say <laughs> well done. <laughs> and finally, mild or spicy? Mild, yeah, not spicy. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Richard. Okay. That's, our, that's our little uh, fun bit um, finish. So thank you so much for agreeing to do this and we'll, we'll, we'll share this to, to everybody so that they can um, I feel as though they've got to know you. Um, and if anyone watching wants to do one of these, then just get in touch. Um, this is how we introduce our full members to the gang. Richard, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. It's very kind thank of you. Yeah. And I'll see you soon. Yeah.